The satellite imagery looking a little bit like a Space Invaders game at times, but rather quiet across the U.S. this Friday afternoon. The central U.S. digs out of the deep freeze. We look ahead to a more quiet weather pattern for this weekend and next week. Across the U.S. this afternoon, we have what can be described as a prevailing high. 1038 millibar high across Missouri, very large extent, representing the last of that Arctic air modifying and slowly warming. The core of that Arctic air appears to be right in here, very shallow near the surface, and of course the much colder air found in the Great Lakes and in Quebec. Looking at a north-south cross-section from the western Gulf Coast region through Iowa up to Manitoba, we see a frontal inversion up at about 10,000 feet and possibly an upper-level front around Oklahoma or Missouri. A quick look at the forecast soundings this afternoon. There it is, that frontal boundary up there at about 10,500 feet in Oklahoma City, and below it, a rather substantial frontal inversion. And the air mass above 700 millibars is actually quite warm. If we do a simple extrapolation down to the surface, we're looking at maybe 60s or 70s for temperatures. So it's just a matter of modifying and advecting out the remaining Arctic air. And we are going to be back into some warm weather early next week. In the northeastern region, temperatures continue to run quite cold. Teens in the mountains, 20s inland, 30s on the coast, and 40s in Virginia. Winter weather advisory continues for the Lake Ontario snowbelt right in here, stretching from Oswego County to Wayne, northern Cayuga counties. That's just north of Syracuse, maybe just west of there. That Winter weather advisory runs through midnight. They're looking for an additional three to five inches of snow possible this evening. Calmer conditions in the Great Lakes area can see a lot of snow on the ground through that entire region. A mixture of snow on the ground and cold advection stratocumulus. But we're going to see a modest warm up today. Temperatures in the mid 20s to the low 30s. But of course, still hanging on to that residual pocket of cold air across Iowa and Wisconsin. In the southeastern U.S., a cool day. 30s in Tennessee, right on the edge of that snow cover. 40s in the Carolinas and deep south. 50s and 60s in Florida with 70s in southern Florida. We see a mixture of different cloud forms extensive cold advection stratocumulus and cumulus out across the Atlantic. Further to the west, we get into a warm advection pattern, and that looks a little bit different. The cloud layers more stratified. Now, we do have some residual cold air advection right in here, so that's producing those cloud streets that tends to be very unstable in the lowest 5,000 feet or so, and it's the opposite further to the west, broken to overcast layers of stratocumulus invading much of Texas, the Arklatex, and Louisiana. And those cloud layers will continue to increase going into Saturday. We can take a quick look at the isentropic analysis. Here we're looking at the 294 Kelvin surface, and we see that southerly flow developing over that cold dome. Now, if you look at the black numbers right here, there's 825 millibars, there's 800, there's 775. And that's indicating these thick black lines. So the isentropic surface increases from 825 millibars, that's going to be roughly about 6,000 feet, up to 775 millibars, which is up at about 8,000 feet. And the flow is out of the south. To conserve its potential temperature, the parcel needs to rise and adhere to this 294 Kelvin surface. And the result is stratified ascent across a wide area. And that develops those cloud layers that we're seeing across much of Texas. And of course, the other helpful item is the high relative humidities, 80 to 90 percent. 
and higher. And that means those parcels are going to saturate rather quickly. So, yes, across Texas, warm advection going on. I can see some indication of a vortex across western Kansas way up there. However, we are digging out of the icebox and those temperatures still remaining quite cold across Texas, 30s. DFW still struggling to get up to 32 degrees. Parts of North Texas up there, north of the Dallas area, still below freezing at this hour. Same story in Oklahoma, 24 at Oklahoma City this afternoon, and still remains pretty cold up there in Kansas. And let's see what that vortex is, a little bit of learning because I did not really see that on those initial analysis charts. That's right in this area where we have a southerly flow in place. Do we see that at 925 millibars? Well, no, because 925 millibars is underground. How about 850 millibars? Well, there could be a little bit of a spin there, not showing a closed circulation. 700 millibars, about 10,000 feet. Yeah, we do have a closed circulation near Colby, Kansas. And it does increase in strength at 500 millibars, starting to look like a cold core low. And at 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet, there it is. So this is all part of that large trough extending from Iowa into Utah. And that appears paired up with this channel jet across the panhandles extending from Nevada through New Mexico and into the Ozarks. So this should be resolved rather well by the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. So let's check it out. That's basically going to start opening up across eastern Kansas overnight and drift eastward into Kentucky and Tennessee. And there it goes. So it's going to move out rather quickly, replaced with this other low coming through New Mexico, which will begin interacting with that frontal boundary in Texas. So this is another reason why the weather is going to start going downhill in that part of the country. As we get into Saturday night and Sunday looks active in the western and central Gulf Coast region and a second trough further to the west. It appears that'll be going pretty far down into South Texas. In the north central U.S., fair skies across much of the region, sunshine from Wyoming all the way into Minnesota. But we've seen a dramatic warm-up as that Arctic air mass modifies, diffuses, and dissipates. So yes, we go from teens in Kansas to 20s in Nebraska, 30s and 40s in South Dakota. So there's been a big change in that part of the country. And we are going to see much warmer conditions going into next week. There is a high wind watch in the higher elevations of southern Wyoming Saturday night, Sunday, and Monday between Cheyenne and Laramie along Interstate 80. West winds could gust to 70 miles an hour. In the southwest, fair skies. Warm conditions continued. We saw 50s in the Intermountain Valleys and Four Corners to the 70s in the southwest deserts. Phoenix looking for a high of 78 today. 75 in Los Angeles, and 66 in Sacramento. All of the Utah mountains, including the Wasatch Range, under an avalanche advisory this weekend. Thick blankets of snow are in place from storms over the past week, which are prone to shifting. So if you're in that area, avoid being anywhere near mountain slopes more than 30 degrees. Sounds a little bit technical, but better safe than sorry. Checking out the Pacific Northwest, warmer temperatures in the low to mid 50s, west of the Cascades, 30s and 40s in the Great Basin area. This afternoon, we were looking for 45 at Boise, 39 at Spokane, and 39 at Salt Lake City. Pasco, Kennewick, Walla Walla, they were under a freezing fog advisory this morning. That's expired. Heading into the weekend, a series of storms, might as well pull up the satellite for that. A series of storms will begin affecting the Pacific Northwest. Here's the first one. 
that will bring 3 to 8 inches of rain with snow levels near 6,000 feet. A good opportunity to look at the integrated vapor transport showing that atmospheric river, that's going to be somewhat on the low side, 400 to 500, but still there will be impacts, especially with that warm advection. Here's the next one coming in for Saturday, a little bit stronger. Yeah, that's definitely into the moderate to strong range, 600 to 700 IVT values with isolated 800. And the depiction doesn't always really show it, but there will be some extent of that moisture inland. And the effect of that with the strong warm advection is enormous snow melt in the 2,000 to 6,000 foot elevation range, along with the prospect of flooding. Flood watch posted for much of far western Montana North Central Idaho, including the bitter roots, for all of the weekend into Monday. There could be excessive runoff with ice jam releases causing flooding in vulnerable mountain valleys. You can see these problems continue through early Monday. Another surge coming in for Tuesday, and then things start looking a little bit better. Then we head out into the Pacific. High pressure off of the California coast. One storm system off the British Columbia coast, not really causing any big problems. You can see some rather warm temperatures ahead of it, up into the mid-40s, all the way to Prince Rupert. Most of that is in the form of rain, with snow in the coastal mountain range. We go up to Alaska, and we see, well, mild conditions up there. Stationary front from just north of Whitehorse into southwestern Alaska. Most of the problems here... In the western part of the state, we've got gale warnings through the Bering Straits and Point Hope to Point Lay, blowing snow, strong east winds prompting a winter weather advisory. Canada is remarkably clear of weather advisories. Most of the eastern part of the country underneath ridging from that high pressure area in the central U.S., the Dempster Highway in Yukon under a blizzard warning due to the strong gradient kicking up loose snow. We have a blizzard warning at Joe Haven in Nunavut. Strong northwesterly winds causing problems there. And the other remaining areas are way out there in Newfoundland near this deep low. Six to eight inches of snow possible in the St. John's area blowing snow and strong winds for the remainder of today. So let's look at that forecast starting with tonight. Dry across much of the eastern U.S., however, in south Texas, drizzle forming across the lower Rio Grande Valley with warm advection, isentropic lift setting up, and of course that lake effect snow continuing in upstate New York. Could see some freezing drizzle and light freezing rain in parts of central Texas around Austin, maybe up the U.S. 79 corridor to Tyler. We'll have to see how that pans out. Don't look for any big accumulations, but there is going to be a little bit of wet bulbing and residual cold air in place that will gradually be eroded by tomorrow morning. Rainy in the northwestern U.S. going into tomorrow some rain in the lower elevations of the Intermountain region, with snow in the higher elevations. Snow levels will rise Saturday from 3,000 to 6,000 feet east of the Cascades. In the Cascades themselves, rising from 5,000 tonight to 8,000 late Saturday. And this is where it really picks up. You can see that most of that is in the form of rain. Massive warm-up continues for the northern plains, 30s and 40s for North Dakota, 40s and 50s for South Dakota. A pocket of freezing weather continues in Iowa and Wisconsin. That's that residual mass of Arctic air slowly drifting into the Great Lakes area, very shallow and very cold. Texas begins to see 50s and a few 60s, those 60s mostly in the panhandles. Rain down to the south, it's going to be kind of a gloomy day there in the Texas Gulf Coast region, Corpus Christi, Houston, maybe even a few thunderstorms possible. Then we go into Sunday. An incredible warm-up on the Great Plains, extensive downslope flow. That'll bring temperatures up into the 50s and even 60s in South Dakota. 60s and 70s across Texas, except for East Texas, which will remain cloudy. 
This extensive area of rain moving into Louisiana and the central Gulf Coast region for later on Sunday and then into Florida Sunday night. In the southwestern U.S., we begin to see some 80s, up to 82 at Phoenix and 84 at Yuma, and it's going to get even hotter. For Monday, another Pacific weather system comes onshore. By this time, I think the snow levels will be settling in at about 5,000 feet, maybe 4,000, and the system traverses the northern Rockies going into Tuesday. Continued unsettled in the Great Lakes, you've probably noticed some of that precip changing over to rain. Another Canadian and Pacific weather system moving across the northern plains for Tuesday and Wednesday. And a major decline in precipitation across the Pacific Northwest. Well, I didn't really emphasize this, but Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're going to be seeing 90s all across the southwest deserts looking for about 90 degrees at phoenix 90 at palm springs it's going to be quite warm there in the eastern u.s a reinforcement of cold air the 540 decameter line all the way down to memphis so some of that snow will return to parts of the appalachian region and the midwest then in the extended another chunk of cold air coming through the great lakes not much southward extent on that you can see that rain snow line across the Midwest region. And then the very last map that I have for March the 2nd. Yeah, we're getting in a storm season for the southern U.S. Some storms being indicated along the secluded front in the Dallas area. Another Pacific system working across the central Rockies, but this is pretty far into the future. And this just happened a few minutes ago while I was recording. I think these are blackbirds, big old swarm of them. And uh, they appear to be gone right now, but I guess the cold weather has caused some weird migration patterns. And that's all I've got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Unfortunately, nobody answered the call for Patreon support on Wednesday. However, I do appreciate the support from those of you who answered the call earlier, John F. Hillary and Damon Smyer. All right, hope you all have a great weekend. We'll be back again on Monday for the private supporter video and on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.